So there are a lot of maps in Party Animals. They range from Last Stand, to Team Modes, to even Experimental Modes where you can play like Uno. What? Anyways, I thought it would be a good idea to rank all of the maps from worst to best. I am basing this off just my own personal opinion. So if you despise me forever for how I rank them, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button. Let's get right into it. There are a total of 23 maps in the game, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to put Castle Ween in the 23rd spot. The reason it's in dead last is mainly because of the lighting. I understand it's a cool idea to have a map to be in total darkness, but it really doesn't work. It ends up just being a gimmick, and you can barely see anything that's going on, and those lamps that spawn as items barely light up anything. Even the lamp posts on the edge of the castle are useless, since you can't turn them around to face the map. I will say that I enjoy the theme of being on top of a creepy Halloween castle, and when it starts to fall apart, it looks really awesome. It's unfortunate that the first map they add to the game since launch was such a disappointment. But hey, there's 22 other maps we gotta talk about. Number 22, Safety Afloat. I am definitely not a fan of this map, to put it nicely. All you do is fling yourself onto that platform that spawns the balloon and pray that you grab it before anyone else does. Once someone gets their grubby hands on that safe, everyone will run for their lives to grab onto it as well. So for more than half of the game, everyone is at a standstill, pulling the safe from opposite sides of the map to try and score. And it really feels like RNG to see who runs out of stamina first. The terrain is also quite frustrating to deal with. Having a huge pit in the middle and constantly getting stuck on the low ground is not enjoyable. I find myself having to claw my way back up and jump kicking to get to the opponent's side of the map which leads to a lot of death by falling. It's number 22, it just barely beats out Castle Wayne. Just because of how ridiculous and funny it can be sometimes when everyone's just throwing themselves across the map. Number 21, Into the Game. I want to start off with saying I love the ideas that Into the Game has. Having to control an arcade machine, which brings you into a 2D pixel world to collect items to win, is such a neat mechanic. It's fun to go and hijack your opponent's machine and make sure that they don't come out as victorious as well. But what really ends up happening is that everyone just throws themselves at the arcade machines, hoping to play it, and since only one person can play per machine, there are six people that have to basically just goof around and wait to play. Once you finally get to play though, you only get a couple of seconds before someone comes flying at you to knock you out. It just becomes a giant conglomerate of animals throwing punches until someone wins, which either takes 20 years or 20 seconds. There's like no in-between with this mode for some reason. Cool ideas in theory, but on paper, it doesn't work out sadly. Also, why haven't they added these character models that are in the crowd as playable characters? A toucan? Godzilla? I'm so excited to see them in action one day. Number 20, Beast Soccer. The first sports game mode on this list. Soccer may be one of the biggest sports in the world, but in Party Animals, it's nowhere near that. The field is ginormous, and for what reason? The game mode is almost guaranteed to last the full duration. You rarely run into a game where a team wins by scoring all three points. You and the rest of the lobby run aimlessly across the grassy field until you get to the ball. But by then, someone already punched the ball across the map, so now you gotta turn and run around to the opposite side towards the ball again. It's also the hardest game mode to score since the accuracy of hitting the soccer ball is next to zero. It's tedious if you play offense, and it's mind-numbingly boring if you play defense. So for that, it's easily one of the worst maps out there. I think everyone has this at the bottom of their tier list. I can't think of a single person that enjoys this game mode. I do believe if they reworked this map to make it just a little more condensed and smaller, it would be a lot more fun. Maybe around the size of Buzzball, or maybe a little bigger than that. And I think it would be a lot more enjoyable to actually use the soccer ball. And you don't even have to fix the accuracy problem since the battlefield is so small. Anyways, moving on to the next map. Number 19, Typhoon. I'll start off with the positives. Playing on a submarine is a cool concept, and the water physics are great. I think that the rockets that spawn are one of the most fun things in this game. I personally love to hold on to the rockets and go for a little ride, but sometimes it doesn't end too well for me. Throwing people into the holes and the ocean is a great feeling, but it all ends once the submarine starts to submerge. Everyone flocks to the top of the sub like a moth to a flame. Every single round on this map plays out the exact same way. The players huddle up like emperor penguins until everyone drowns besides one person. Even then, there are stragglers holding onto the tail end of the sub, praying that they can cheese out the round and squeeze out that win. In the end, the rounds get really boring and just play out the same, so I'm not a fan of it. I think a way to improve this mode is maybe to have more room to move around with on the top of the sub, or maybe remove those weird angles that you can get on, like that cockpit at the top of the sub, because once you're there, it's like impossible to drag someone out of that spot. It gets super lame, and everyone that gets there first basically wins. Number 18, Lollipop Factory. I remember when this was the first map I played during the 2020 beta. I have very fond memories of this map. Get him, get him out of here! <laughs> the teams charge in towards the gummies like they are in a war. 
You have to drag candy towards your side and pull a lever to send them down an eternal pit of darkness. Now the gumdrops are worth points, but the big gummy bear is the real prize. It's a lot of points, and for that reason, most people will crowd that thing and try to pull its limbs apart in opposite directions. You have like two people from each team fighting for their lives on that bear. And then the others will grab the scraps of the gumdrops to try and squeeze any points that they can. A lot of the times, the bear gets stuck in that small doorway, which results in both teams not really getting a lot of points. My main gripe with this map is how annoying it is to get the gummies to the pit. You have to drag it all the way around the dang map. You can toss the little gummies to avoid wrapping around, but with the bear, you're doomed. If you want to try and score that, good luck. I will say they added a map that fixes all those problems, and you'll see that later down on the list. Number 17, Wind Tunnel. I wouldn't call this map a bad map, it's just not very memorable for me. I don't appreciate how bad the camera angles are when you're not on the main platform though. Like I can't see anything which makes it all the more difficult to get back on. I know it's supposed to be like a punishment for falling off, but no one is ever having fun when they can barely see what the character's doing. The main platform itself is also just too small. Having 8 players on it gets pretty insane, which is fine, it's fun to have chaos in a game like this, but you have nowhere to go especially when the wind turbines kick in. I find it hilarious that everyone signs a peace treaty when the fans are turned on. There's always someone pulling the lever, and everyone else just huddles next to them like they're in an igloo or something. Adding that the levers will break off if you pull them for too long is a great mechanic so that the rounds don't last forever. Like I said, it's not a bad map, but there just isn't enough that makes me want to pick this map over others. Number 16, Beast Football. Now the reason Beast Football is higher than Beast Soccer is because the field is smaller and on an incline. You may think that the hills are a negative, but I assure you it's genius. Since you have to grab the football and carry it like an item, it already makes the accuracy much better over kicking the soccer ball into a random direction. You might say, hey, if somebody grabs the football, can't they just rush the end zone for some easy points? No! You silly viewer, that's the whole point of the hills! You are constantly losing stamina if you have the ball, especially if you're running uphill. It makes it impossible just to rush from one zone to the other without dropping the ball or being forced to toss it. It's really fun to be linebackers and charge to the opposing team, batting heads together. You can even have some nice team coordination and attempt to pass the ball around, although it may not work every time. There are other sports modes I like more coming up, but this one's alright. Number 15, Beat em Up Bridge. This is a deadly map to be on. You're on this small bridge that can snap at a moment's notice. People can actually speed up that process by punching the ropes that keep the whole thing together. It leads to some pretty funny moments for people hanging on to the bridge like it's the Lion King. There's even a chance for it to spawn already broken, making it extremely chaotic and stressful to be in. You really gotta watch out for those spectators in this map if you're gonna hang on to the bridge. They'll be trying anything to knock you off, which usually means they are spamming the fish until you fall to your doom. I've run into scenarios where your party animal will get stuck between the wooden boards because the cracks get too big, which is pretty hilarious. If I had one thing to say, I would say I wish it was easier to break the ropes because it takes like 10 minutes just to get one part of it snapped. But that's just like my only criticism, if you can call it that. It's more of a nitpick. Number 14, Beast Hockey. I do enjoy watching hockey, but it is not the reason why it's higher than football and soccer. The field is smaller than both of those maps and having it entirely covered in ice keeps you on your toes. This time you can actually play goalkeeper with shields given to both teams that will block the giant puck as it comes your way. It may be difficult to control the hockey puck, but it's much easier to control over the soccer ball, and it usually won't end it in a standstill. You can score pretty consistently, and you can randomly out of nowhere just drop kick a sneak a goal in. It's pretty satisfying and is what beast soccer should be. A smaller arena with the ball being able to bounce off the walls like the hockey puck would really elevate that mode, but that's just my opinion. Number 13, Final Destination. You may not even know about this map since it's not on the quick play rotation. You can only access this in custom games under the lab tab. It really feels like a team mode though, since it's a 4v4 where you have to kill people 10 times by throwing them into a subway having the train smash them to bits. You can explore a lot around this map. There's a telephone booth, a vending machine next to a shopping cart, and even an escalator. It's overall a pretty fun experience, but nothing insane. I feel like they will rework this map in the future since it's only accessible in custom games. It's probably going to get the winter cabin rework since that was the other map that was in the lab category. Regardless, I'll hope it gets its time in the spotlight. Number 12, Gator Valley. The setting for this map really carries it for me. Being inside the mouth of an alligator rock formation as water spews out is such a unique environment to be in. The main gimmick of this mode are the giant waves that will come after you while you're on the bridge. The waves are not that deadly, but they do get more threatening the longer you last in the round. The bridge makes you feel extremely claustrophobic. With so many people running around, you are bound to fall into the water. As long as the waves don't push you away, you'll be able to climb back on with relative ease. The gameplay here is fine, it's nothing insane, but I will always watch the beautiful sunset as I get thrown off the map. Number 11, Winter is Coming. 
This is where most of the maps start to get really fun for me. There are three campfires that are around the map, and the purpose of those are to keep you warm when the blizzard approaches. I enjoy how large the map is, so you'll find like three separate fights happening all at once. As the round keeps going, the campfires will slowly die out until everyone freezes. Bombs will spawn frequently on the map so that you can throw them at others that are huddled up against the fire. Even if you freeze, there's a chance your ice cube can slide down next to the fire and melt you back to life. The rounds can last a little too long, but other than that, I enjoy picking this map, although it's not my favorite. Number 10. Icebreaker. The better winter themed last stand map. The size of the map is perfect. It's not too small and not too big. I think this is the best size map. It's simple yet effective with the iceberg slowly breaking apart as the rounds go on. Whatever you do, don't fall into the water. It's well below freezing so you'll turn into an ice cube pretty quickly if you get yourself stuck in it. I will say that climbing back onto the iceberg can be really annoying because sometimes your character gets stuck in like this infinite loop of jumping up to get back on but missing and going back into the water. My favorite part is when there's like two to three separate islands when the terrain breaks apart which creates some funny moments. The ice on the floor makes it hard to control your movement which I think makes it more fun but when you're spectating and throwing items it's pretty lame because when you toss an item it just slides across the map at like Mach 10 from the ice. Number 9. Winter Cabin. Sorry for doing three winter maps in a row, that's just how it works. Back in the day, it was like the final destination map. It would be a 4v4, and to win, you would have to kill people 10 times. The way you would do this is to toss them out of windows and push them out the door into the frozen tundra as they turn to ice. There is a bar with milk cartons you can drink, which gives you the effect of the spinach item, but your controls are reversed to simulate being drunk. It was an alright game mode, but nothing insane. And recently, they reworked the map to play completely different. First, you can wander outside the map without freezing, so there's really no way to die unless you walk out out of bounds. Secondly, they added a jukebox that plays music, and if you want to change the song, it costs 10 cookies. Lastly, but the coolest addition is the Uno game mode they called Pause. I find Winter Cabin to be a really chill hub world. Since there is no way to end the game besides leaving, you can just invite your friends and mess around and rage at the Uno game. I find it fun to play on this map from time to time, but it really doesn't play like most of the regular Party Animals games. When you log on to Party Animals, you're looking to just have fun and knock out all the animals in your site. In this mode, you're kind of just like walking around aimlessly and play Uno. And Uno can only be so fun, you know what I'm saying? So it's fun, but also at the same time, it's not a typical party animal mode. Number eight, Luggage Chaos. The most recent map added into Party Animals. Remember when I said there's a map that's just way better version of Lollipop Factory? Yeah, this is this map. Instead of gumdrops, it's briefcases, but the objective is still the same. Drop your loot into the endless pit of darkness. The giant gummy bear problem is not present in this mode because the briefcase is just golden. It's not any bigger than a normal one. It's pretty easy to move it to your side with the conveyor belts that moves the cases through TSA. There are still people that don't understand how airports work and <laughs> will still try to bring their bags through the main doors and wonder why it won't open for them. The map size is smaller than lollipop factory as well so it makes it less frustrating to bring stuff to your pit to score but there is one glaring problem that gets frustrating to deal with if the luggage is standing upright it won't fit through the detectors and it causes heavy traffic that keeps everything from moving through it thankfully they will despawn it after a bit if it's stuck but it's really annoying especially if you're trying to push the golden briefcase for some big points overall this is a great map and is an amalgamation of all they have learned from the previous team maps they made Number 7. Black Hole Lab The whole black hole mechanic is one of the most genius ideas for a physics party game. Having the giant black hole spawn and suck everything and give it zero gravity works perfectly. Even the rounds don't last that long since it's near impossible to escape the third hole because it's so strong each time it spawns. The only thing that almost guarantees your safety is the iron chain that's on the side of the map. As long as you grab that, you're good to go. It's really funny to see people grab onto each other or other items and pray they don't die. Sometimes when the gravity is back to normal, the item they hold will drop on their head and knock them out. The map itself is great since it's donut shaped so throwing people in the middle could be pretty satisfying. What a map, I would choose this most of the time I see it in quick play. Number 6. Buzz Ball. This is by far the best sports game mode and it's not even a real sport. It's first to six points with a giant electric ball. You can pick it up like an item and toss it into their goal. But the catch is that anyone else can yoink the ball and now you're in a tug of war. But not for long since if more than one person grabs onto it, the ball will explode and electrify everyone touching as it launches across the field. I personally find it the best sport mode because of how fast paced it is. The arena is pretty small so you don't have to run around everywhere. It's just a 4v4 of people trying to score. You can get pretty strategic too since you can play defense by waiting for the ball to explode and take advantage of everyone being electrocuted. And my favorite strategy is to wait for the opponent to grab the ball as they run towards your goal. What I do is grab onto them to slow them down and since I'm not touching the ball it won't explode. As I'm weighing them down I can also throw in some headbutts and knock them out which results in a free ball for your team to yoink. If only there was a buzzball league in real life. Number 5. Trebuchet. This is by far the most unique team mode out there at the moment. It's a 4v4 and the map is split in two by a giant river. 
There are two giant trebuchets, one on either side, and the teams have to launch bombs to explode the opponent's island. Once you do it 10 times, you win. The best part about it is that you can launch yourself to get to the other side to sabotage them. It ends up being so hilarious, and there's good strats that come from it. People launch to play offense and mess with the enemy, while the defense tosses the bombs into the river to prevent them from exploding. My favorite thing to do is hold bombs and launch onto the island and hold them until they explode. This makes it much more difficult to prevent the explosions from happening. It's fantastic and always a blast when you play it. It beats every team on out there besides this one coming up right now. Number 4. Fluffy Redemption Each team is in a race on two separate trains that holds coal you have to place into a furnace to speed up the train. You can get really aggressive and train hop to pull the lever and this acts as a brake for the train. It's pretty funny to slow down the train as they try to knock you out and throw you off the train or burn you in the furnace. Oh yeah, you can die in the furnace by the way, so be cautious of that. The coal can be thrown at people to knock them out, which is my favorite thing to do when the enemies come onto my train. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my goodness. If you take the risk of train hopping, you should look both ways because there's signs that the trains will drive past and you can get yourself slapped on them when you attempt to jump. There's just so many fun things that happen on this map and in my humble opinion, is the best team mode out there as of uploading this video. Number 3. Broken Arrow. Welcome to the top 3. These maps are always going to get picked by me, and if I'm doing a custom game, these modes are always going to be there. Broken Arrow is the embodiment of pure chaos. Being on a tiny airplane is insane, especially since it turns left and right to make it even harder to hang on to. By the time the round starts, it's literally guaranteed someone is dying off rip. Either someone sucker punches someone off spawn, or they attempt a jump kick and completely miss their mark and fall off. If you somehow survive long enough, the plane will start to freeze, making it impossible to control your movement. It is so entertaining to play on this map, the rounds never last too long which makes it so fun since there is little to no downtime. You're always in the action. The only complaint I would have is the, that the items you throw when spectating immediately fall off the plane since it's always tossing and turning. But it really is just too fun so it will comfortably take third place. Number 2. Conveyor Taking the silver medal is one of the newer maps added to the game. At first when I tried this map, I wasn't really feeling it too much. I didn't have a full lobby, it was just me and two other friends, so we didn't really get the full experience. The more I played the map and actually had full lobbies, it easily soared through the ranks for me. The entire terrain is covered in conveyor boats that are constantly moving. It's like you're on a giant treadmill. On the sides there are super fast belts that will force you to either jump back to the center or send you flying off the map. Occasionally, there will be long wooden planks that will spew out and force you to jump over it. Be careful, the wood will drag you off the map because it's constantly being moved by the conveyors. Also, there's this weird like cart thing that's there. Honestly, not too much you can do with the cart. It's kind of random, but it can like bully you and push you off of the map. As the round gets longer, the faster the treadmill will be. And near the end, you cannot outrun its pace, so someone is guaranteed to fall off. There's a cool spot where you can hide on the sides in the early game, and you can just launch yourself out when you're ready. It's so funny. I enjoy this map so, so much because you're forced to constantly do something. I love how much the bombs spawn on the map because I think it's so fun to throw them. There's only one more left we got to talk about, though. Number 1. Ichiban First place, it completely deserves the gold medal here. It's essentially the poster child map of party animals. It may be the default map, but it just outdoes everything else in my opinion. There's like poisonous fart gas that's in the low ground and it will slowly move up onto the map until it's fully covered. I think the arena is perfectly sized and there are two pillows you can climb on top of and chill there. In fact, there's a ton of places you can climb onto. In my myth busting video, I found so many spots it was really fun to find. There's even one I found semi-recently where you can just chill on these little pillars at the start and the gas won't get to you, but if you move forward even a little bit, they will kill you for being out of bounds, so be careful. Once you're there, it's really hard for anyone to spot you, and if they're spectating, they can't see you at all from any camera angle. The only thing they can do is throw a bomb and bounce it off the wall to get the blast radius to launch you. Or if someone spots you that's playing, they can shoot you with a taser or an ice weapon or a crossbow. I think every time I played Party Animals, I voted for this map. It's just way too good. And that's my tier list of the maps in Party Animals. I know you're very impressed with my tier list, and to show it, you're gonna have to like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe! Let me give a special shout out to my YouTube members. We're now at 5 YouTube members from last being 3. Let's go guys, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for watching the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!